welcome to another episode of Spear Born of Fire. Before we continue on the journey, let's take a look at the patterns I want to create. Here are two spearheads with wolf tooth pattern and twisted stars. Each episode you watch will get us closer to this result. In this episode, I will be creating the twist pattern and weld it to the core. I have a number of already prepared pattern welded bars from previous projects. Tony and I am choosing the one that looks the best. In the pictures you just saw, you may have noticed that the twisted patterns on the spearhead came from one bar with different twist directions and a hairpin weld. The first step is to create the different twists. However, before we go there, there is something you can do to help me with these videos. If you like them, please share them on your social networks such as Twitter, Reddit or Facebook. This helps to get more viewers and increases my motivation to produce these videos. Let's prep the bars for twisting. The first step is to weld on two supports for my twisting jig, and slow motion makes that look almost magical. Once the bar is in the twisting jig, I'm using the oxyacetylene torch to heat the bar to a bright orange and then slowly twist it. My method is to heat up roughly 2 inches of bar and then make a constant number of twists so that the pattern stays even throughout the whole bar. You may hear me counting out loud in the background. To prevent the bars from shearing in the corners, I usually put on a slight chamfer to reduce the transition angle. With the jig and the torch, twisting is usually a fairly quick process and becomes very repeatable. Frequent brushing helps with removing scale and keeps the bars cleaner since they need to be forge welded back to square later. I twisted left for one half of the bar and now it's Tony's turn to twist right for the other half of the bar. Once all the twisting is done, we use a wire brush on an angle grinder to clean up any remaining scale. My usual philosophy is to keep everything as clean as possible to reduce the rate of failure. Since all of this work consumes so much time, I really want to avoid starting over. The wire brush on the angle grinder can be quite dangerous. I prefer to wear a full face mask and brace the grinder against my body. Here you can see the supports for the twisting jig a little bit better. It's just little metal squares that I weld to my bars. After twisting, the bars always need to be forge welded back to square before they can be used any further. As with all my forge welding, I do this in sections and make sure that the bars are hot enough for the liquid flux to squeeze out easily. To maintain the same dimension, I use a spacer on the power hammer.
Any true blacksmith would be horrified by what is coming next. I need to bend the bar precisely in the middle, and I'm doing that freehand with a torch. I have many excuses for that. The Sight Blast Forge was not running, and the Propane Forge does not give me localized heat. However, I don't have any excuses for what you are seeing here. That seems like a terrible way to bend the bar in the middle. So let's use the Coal Forge after all, and do some corrections with the hammer. To successfully weld the bar I just bent to the core of the spear, I need a very precise fit without any gaps. This is easier said than done, but for now it's good enough to cut the bar to the right length. As I had heated the bar for bending, some of the resulting scale needs to be removed again. A small file is appropriate for the job. I am getting ready for the final fit now, and really hope that all of this is going to come together. A failure here would ruin all the work done so far. Once the spear is hot enough to deck flux, I apply plenty of it. The next couple of minutes are going to determine success or failure. I will let the action speak for itself. So far, everything looks like it came together. I will just do one more light welding pass before declaring victory. If you have watched all episodes so far, you have seen four different forge welding steps. There are several more to come. Some of these steps could be combined, but I prefer to do them separately since that gives me more control. In preparation for the next step, I need to taper the tip into a much sharper end. This is necessary since we need to fit the cutting edge of the spear over the core that we have built up so far. If you have not subscribed so far, or are thinking why should I subscribe at all, I am saying think twice. It's just the press of a button. How hard can it be? Alright, that's it for now. Don't forget to share this video on your social networks, and I will see you next time.